Did you know that you will set yourself up for self-sabotage just by using the word resolution, as in New Year's resolutions? How is that? Well, how many resolutions have you set and then actually achieve them and not only achieve them, but was able to hold on and go even to the next level? No, for most people, it is a zero. And so just by using the word resolution, you have already relieved your subconscious from the responsibility of being able to move you forward. And to keep the progress that you've worked so hard to attain. So what is it that you need to do? Well, let's start looking at results instead of resolutions, how to go from goal setting into goal getting. So this is going to be a series that I'm doing. How many? Don't know yet. But let's start with the first three tips for you today. And tip number one, you operate from your vision, not to get to your vision. Now, a lot of people think that the vision is the achievement of the goal. No, it's not. Success and those achievements are just the journey. The true destination is who you really are to be able to achieve because I, I want you to remember this. You will never outperform your inner identity. So that's the real goal is who do you need to be in order to achieve and then to, in order to use that achievement as a foundation to go even higher, greater heights of success with less effort. So you can set a goal, definitely, but then ask yourself, who do you need to be? What do you need to focus on? What emotions do you need to optimize? Because it's not always going to feel good. In fact, uh, your goal is dependent on how comfortable you can get with becoming uncomfortable. And then what actions will you implement for impact? When you set a goal, you say, I'm here and it's out there. Well, now you have space. And the subconscious mind, which runs all of your habits and patterns, and the achievement that you're looking for is simply a habit and pattern. Well, your subconscious mind will not tolerate a void. So when there's space, it's going to have to fill it with something. For most people, they want to know how. How am I going to get the goal? It's not the how, it's the who. I feel like Dr. Seuss. The who shows up first. And then you can move in to the how and the what. Okay, so you operate from your vision of who you need to be. That's what goes into that space is your identity and your identity upgrade. This is the reason why you have to get subconscious agreement on that identity upgrade. See, after age 13, the subconscious doesn't want to learn anything new. And so it's going, ah, let's just go to what's familiar, which is the reason why most people will give up on New Year's resolutions by January 16th. And for the few that remain that try to stick it out with willpower, and willpower is a limited resource. Well, by February 16th, they're done. But the subconscious is unlimited. Right now, it is running your entire internal system and has energy to spare. But it is going to use that energy either for struggle based on your familiar zone. It's not a comfort zone. It's a familiar zone. And instead, you need to be able to move through what is known as the terror barrier to get to the other side, which is growth. And the terror barrier is simply things that the subconscious throws at you to try to get you to stop, which is the reason why if you're relying on willpower instead of subconscious agreement, well, you know, it's not going to take you very long to re run out of resources instead of resourcefulness. And then it's just easier to quit. And the bad thing about that is the subconscious knows how to stop you 
quicker, faster, and easier the next time you get ready to move forward. All right. So step number one, you operate from the vision, not to get to the vision. And that vision is your identity upgrade. Step number three is if it's worth remembering, it's worth writing it down. You need to make it plain. You need to be able to see it, to hear it, to think it. Whatever goal it is that you're wanting to achieve and who you're becoming in order for that goal to become part of your identity. Now, this is something that I want you to know in this area. A lot of people will write down the achievement and then they feel really good and they fantasize about it. You're wasting internal resources when you do that because the subconscious mind can say, oh, great, fantasy? Well, it works just as well as reality. What do you want to do instead? Instead, when you think about it, you think about all the different ways that you can get to that goal, all the different opportunities that you can use. Are there people that are going to be coming into your life? You don't even know who they are yet, but is there someone that's going to be able to assist assist you? Uh, is it going to be something with your health and your stamina and your perseverance? Uh, might it be somebody in, in your career that can lend a helping hand? You want to think about all the different ways that different resources as well as resourcefulness can come in and assist you. The goal never changes, but the way to get there will. We know you're going to have problems. You've heard me share this with you before. Borrow trouble. Write down three to five top ways you think this is going to screw up and what you're going to do to be able to keep going. You can be delayed, but you will not be denied because that way you're training the subconscious that when problems do show up, you're going to find a way to get to the other side. What's interesting is what you plan to have happen probably is not what's going to take place, but because you're training your subconscious that it doesn't matter what gets thrown into your path, you're still going to find a way over it, then you'll be able to handle it. So write it down if it's worth remembering. And then number three for today, whatever it is, uh, whatever area it is that you're having a challenge with, that you're setting this goal around, maybe it's relationships or it could be health or it's finances, you don't have a fill in the blank problem. You have a pattern problem. We have patterns, we have habits, we have spaced repetition, and then we have immersion experiences. Immersion experiences are something that you go through just one time that was so intense. It opens you up to other ways uh, of living. And it can also be so intense that it opens you up to ways of shutting down. This is the reason why you got to give your pain a purpose for progress. When I went whitewater rafting two and a half years ago, uh, did not expect that uh, it would get pretty intense. And at one point, I would be battling for my life. But, but, Whenever they they finally found me and got me over to the the bank of the river, uh, the Okoe chaos, yeah, it was o Okoe crisis for those of you in the know. Uh, they're like, okay, we're we're gonna call on the bus to be able to take you back to headquarters. And I went, no, uh, -uh. I'm finishing what I started. I was shaking so bad that it, it was hard for me to hold the paddle. Why did that? I do that when I could have quit, when I was only halfway through 
a five hour journey and I knew that I was going to have to face terror for the, the next two and a half hours because of what had just happened to me. Because I didn't want this to be a pattern. I had to give my pain a purpose for progress. So whenever I move into bad experiences, I call them beautiful weeds in my garden of growth. Because we can look at a weed and still find beauty in it and say, yeah, that's a prairie in progress. And that's how I want you to look at those immersion experiences that you've been through where you're like, I don't know what's on the other side. I'm here to tell you, Growth is on the other side, but we've got to train the subconscious mind to make that happen, which is the reason why I love hypnosis, because it gets the subconscious mind to accept things rapidly because you're working in its realm instead of telling it it has to come to yours. Okay, so you have immersion experiences, and out of those immersion experiences, then you can move into what's known as spaced repetition. We learn through things being repeated. So what have you been repeating from your past that has caused problems? And this is the reason why people think that affirmations will work. Uh, no, they won't. No, in fact, it's been scientifically proven that affirmations do not work. Why is that? Because it's the emotion behind what you are repeating. And so if you're like, oh, yeah, um, hey, I've got this incredibly uh, toned body and my bank account is overflowing and all my relationships are here to support me. And you have disbelief and you have fear, and you have anxiety, well, then the subconscious goes, oh, okay, yeah. Well, then every time we go after those things, we're going to have disbelief, we're going to have fear, we're going to have anxiety, and it's going to shut you down from taking your action. Did you know that a couple of Harvard psychologists found that fear and excitement are the same area of the brain? What determines it is how you upgrade that fear into excitement. And that anxiety can be used as extra energy to get more done in less time. Uh, that frustration that you may f feel is simply an indicator that you have untapped potential that you're not using. So you ha we have to say, okay, What's on the other side? Now, I just gave you some broad generalizations. It's going to be unique for each individual. But again, tapping into your subconscious and going, if we can use these emotions and optimize them for the growth that's on the other side of the terror barrier, what would that be? How quickly can we do it? and you have permission to make it happen now. Okay, so spaced repetition. You need to have tools that whenever the fear shows up, you convert it into excitement, into passion, into energy, into focus. You optimize it. And that's known as an authoritative post-hypnotic. That means that in the hypnosis session, you are given a tool that you will use after the hypnosis session is over with to continue to assist you. Okay, so um, spaced repetition. Then after that, spaced repetition turns into habits. Now, what's interesting about habits is that you don't use them all the time. I have a habit around the holidays of putting up holiday decorations. I don't put up Christmas wreaths in the middle of summer. So you have habits that can lay dormant until there's a trigger. The idea is what are you being triggered to do? Are you being triggered to avoid? Or are you being triggered to amplify for achievement? Are you being triggered to pull back and, and hide? Or are you being triggered that everything that shows up in your life, you're going to actually utilize 
for your health. So we have to give the triggers new meaning. And this is when you hear people talk about reframing. And reframing is good, but there's something that's even better. And that is spiraling up into an upgrade because you have patterns. Patterns are with you all the time. In fact, your reticular activating center is seeking out, it's known as your RAS, it is seeking out everything in your environment right now to be able to use the patterns that are in place. And this is the reason why I say you've got to give that pain a purpose for progress because you run your patterns all the time. And right now you have a pattern of seeking out people, places, and things that will reinforce what you learned about your identity typically before age eight. It is said that over 80% of who we are as an adult was learned by age eight, not based on our unique brilliance because we weren't showing it yet, but based on who someone else needed us to be in order for their life to be okay, but typically at our expense. So we have to train your powerful subconscious that every experience that you have, that everything that is repeated, that every habit that is triggered is going to lead you to a level of progress. Okay. So to summarize, one, you're operating from the vision of who you really are, not to get to the vision. Two, if it's worth remembering, it's worth writing it down. And three, you don't have a fill in the blank problem. You have a pattern problem that now needs to be given the purpose for progress. So I think that's a great start on how to turn your New Year's resolutions into results that will continue to support you at the highest levels. Look forward to seeing you at the next one.